Hello everybody, this is Firehaven. My name is Rob. This here is Vinny. He is a uh, vinegaroon. Uh, some people call them whip scorpions, um, mainly because they have this little deal on the back here. It's like a tail, but it's not used for stinging. It's more used to whip. Uh, at the base of their tail is where they get their name vinegaroon. They're able to spray a vinegar-like substance. I believe it's called acetic acid. It's not super strong, but it's not something you'd ever want to get in your eyes. It's, and it can stink a little. The enclosure sometimes can smell. Um, the one that I have is a vinegar room that's called um, Mastigoproctus giganteus. Uh, this one mainly comes from the Arizona region, Mexico region, uh, there may be another one that is in the United States. Uh, most of these types of vinegaroon species are going to come from Asia, tropical, subtropical areas. Um, they actually don't have any species in Europe or Australia. Uh, there is one that's it's quite different looking, but uh, there's one species in Africa. Um, this is part of a, a species of arachnids that are called Phalophonida, which encompasses whip spiders, uh, or whip scorpions. Um, they're also called Europigids. Um, some people loosely call them Europigi, but they're, they're very unlike any other arachnid you've seen. You're, when you hear arachnid, you think arachnophobia, a spider, a tarantula. Uh, I mean, those have eight legs. These essentially have eight legs. The front of them are what make them different than an actual spider because their, their first set of legs are, 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 are basically pedipalps. They're the pinchers, like a, a crab would reach out and grab something, pinch on, and bring it into its mouth. It's the same idea with uh, your pigeon. It's, uh, the first front uh, are pinchers, then they have these modified long whip, uh, 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 feelers out here if you see. They're, they're feeling around, they're kind of a reddish color if you can see it. The thing about it is that they're, they're pretty much blind as a bat. They're going to use these things to feel around in the dark. They, they shy away from the light, they don't care much for it. I'm sure if you've had a bad hangover, you wake up, you don't want that light in your eye. Same idea. They're used to just roaming around, poking around at night. They're going to find something like a, a cricket, a roach, a, a millipede. I found out they actually like millipedes. I'm, uh, I'm thinking I might try that out with some of the millipedes I have. Uh, but they'll just grab onto it, bring it right in. They don't stick things in. They don't do venom. They're just going to sit there and mash and mash and turn it into a jelly and then just suck it right in. It's really fun to watch them eat. I mean, just just finding a, a little roly-poly or an isopod. See, I just blew on it. It didn't like that. So, in within this video, I'm going to show you how it searches around, how it, it navigates during the night. They most of the filming I ever do is late at night. I, I probably lose a lot of sleep coming in here anywhere between 1 and 4 in the morning because I really get excited to see what they're up to. I come in during the day since, you know, with uh, government mandated self-quarantine or what have you, a lot of people aren't going into work. For me, that's a bonus. I get to peek on all my animals. I get to see what they're up to. But Vinny, the vinegaroon, He's just camped away in his little cave. He will only come out, kind of check out the scene. He might get a little bit of water off of the side. Um, that's the other thing about these guys. You're going to want to make sure that you always have water nearby, whether it's in a little bowl. Uh, I use little deli cups. Um, it's a good idea to spray the side of your enclosure so that they can come up here and just kind of like squeegee the water right off of the glass and then they'll bring it right in. Really fun to watch. Um, in a later video, I'll probably go over how you can tell the gender 
of these. Um, a lot of it has to do with what their pinchers or their pedal palp looks like. Uh, but I'll, I'll get close-ups, I'll get some pictures and I can show you. Some people say that the, one of the ways to figure that out is look at the bottom of them. What, and you can see how squirrely he can be. He's always searching. You can't get this guy on his back to look at the underbelly. Alright, so here, a little closer, a little more light was what I was talking about. At the base of the tail right here is where they spray that, that vinegar-like substance that is kind of an irritant to attackers. They don't have any defense on them other than really their appearance to a human, I guess, and the vinegar that they would excrete from the base of their tail. Um, so the first set of legs here is just their pedipalps, just like crabs, just like scorpions, just like, well, actually I think spiders have them to bring food in. It's just not something that's a grabby tool. Uh, right behind their pedipal pedipalps is their modified leg that is essentially feelers. Uh, they use it as sort of a radar to get out in front. They don't they don't have, I mean, when the, the moon's out, that's most that they're going to have for light. So they're going to need to have some type of a searching mechanism. Uh, they do have a, kind of a trifecta of eyes. They have a little cluster of eyes right in the front above the chelicerae or the, uh, the, the mouth parts. Then they have a cluster of eyes and a cluster of eyes on the left and the right. Not that it does them any good, uh, but aesthetically pleasing to the other females. I, not, I'm making that up. Uh, just like spiders and tarantulas, they do have a, I think it's called the carpus? Carpus? I think it's called the carpus. Just the thorax area. And nice little ridge on their abdomen. Very pretty. I like the way that it really looks. Uh, just the little dotted type deal going on. It almost seems as though they've got cartilage in between all of these little hard parts. You can see the white in between. I think when they're about to molt, it's going to be a little lighter. I think just like with most things like lizards and things, they start getting uh, light. So he hasn't molted yet, but I think that that'll be an indicator. They'll probably stop eating and get really light colored and then uh, probably try to hide away. They, they really love to burrow. So you're not going to really see them during the day, but during the night, the night time is the right time. They're going to be out having their good time. All right, so I'm going to put him in. I'm going to put him away home. I've been uh, poking and prodding him for long enough. He'll probably be happy to go home. You're only going to want to have one vinegaroon per uh, terrarium or tank. I think you'll have uh, some competition if you put more than one male in there. What I've done with my tank, yep, we'll get whatever this is off of there. I think it's a piece of toilet paper. What I've done with my tank is this is not a real plant. This is just some plasticky nylon thing. But it, what I like is when you spray it, it actually holds some of the water in there. So it does keep your humidity up. Um, I try to put pieces of cork bark, little pieces of wood, so you can... I don't know if you can see back here, but, you know, wood kind of holds in the moisture. I like to put in cork bark because they do like to dig. They like to go under things. I try to put one or two little water bowls in here. You're going to find oftentimes they're going to dump dirt in it. They're just like little tractors or back hose, and they're going to dig down, and they're going to need to put that dirt somewhere, and for some reason they just love dumping it in their water dish. kind of irritates me. Uh, Vinegarins like to have multiple places to hide away, whether it be from a, you know, when I have my light on top of the the, wesh, uh, the mesh top, or um, I, I like to have these hollow cork bark pieces. They love to hang out in there. A lot of times I'll I'll catch him hanging out in there, and his little little pedipalps will be hanging out. Um, this is just an aquarium deal, just for aesthetics. Water bowl over here. I try to put some sphagnum moss. You can use frog moss. I just use, like to use some type of a uh, a moss in there to kind of keep the water, the moisture, the humidity all throughout. 
I do have a uh, little thermometer and hydrometer back there. These are really not all that accurate. I think the more that you get to know, um, you know, how, how much you wet it down, you'll get a feel for what it needs to be like. Uh, it doesn't hurt to put something in there for a general idea, but I think they're cheap and unnecessary. Uh, the new addition I've done, you can see all these little speckles in here. It's actually terrarium grass. I'm going to try and see what that, uh, what that does for the humidity and the aesthetics of it. Lugardi does a lot of different things. I'm trying the terrarium grass, but they do things like uh, regular millipede and isopod. They, uh, they do tarantula substrates. So, so, you know, and that's the thing with, uh, with all invertebrates. There's no right way. There's no necessary wrong way. You just experiment. He's been doing pretty well. No, no, uh, you know, no issues, no, no fighting. I actually have a, a Madagascan hissing cockroach in here. I don't know if you can see that little antenna in there. I thought I'd give him a buddy. He's never attacked him. They seem to get along just fine. I just toss a little bit of greens in here. Hisser comes out, eats it. Sometimes they come out and they slap skins, you know, high five, and then they go back. Um, I'm actually going to spray it down a little bit. Just give them, give give it a little spray down. I wouldn't recommend ever spraying your vinegar in directly. I think it just irritates them. That's about all you need. He'll probably go up and get a drink later. A couple times I've caught him up on the top just exploring. So, you know, experiment. I started out with basically just dirt and a cork bark hide, and then you get paid. You go and you splurge, you buy a couple things, and, and then you find that your uh, vinegaroon or your other invertebrates have a fun time just exploring their new digs. Before I go, I did want to mention the type of substrate that I use for him. In a desert environment where you're used to finding these guys, it's mostly sand and rock and things like that. I try to use something that's a little softer for them to dig through and burrow in, that maintains the moisture, the humidity, and overall just aesthetically pleasing for a terrarium. I've been using something new that's, uh, that I purchased from Josh's Frogs. It's the uh, Atlanta Botanical Gardens mix. So I found that it works. He, he has a lot of fun digging in it. Uh, but it's a leaf litter, so it's good with millipedes. But leaf litter, sphagnum moss, uh, a substrate barrier. If you're going to have something where you want to not have a lot of water, uh, you know, you want to have some water drained down to the bottom. And then uh, they do have little bits of rock in it. Uh, not much, but... If you're going to set up an actual uh, tropical type of a terrarium where you want to spray it real well, have that water leak down to the bottom and collect, and you always have a little bit of water at the bottom to kind of come up, I find this uh, would work really well. Uh, he seems to like it. Uh, I don't put it in layers, though. I just throw it in there, jostle it around, really mix it up, and I give it a good moistening. Sorry, I said the word, but he loves it. I love it. Uh, usually I just use something that I bought from uh, Peter Clausen with Bugs in Cyberspace. It's something I bought, uh, I'd used for years with my millipedes. It works really well. I thought I'd try something different since it's, a, since it's a different type of an arachnid. I would try something out, maybe patronize a different company. Um, you know, it never hurts to experiment. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to more, uh, I hope to have some reptile-involved ones, uh, many more invertebrates. Uh, give me a like, hit that subscribe bell, and make sure to subscribe, and I'll keep it coming. This has been Firehaven, over and out.